gonna set out in here. Right, what are you gonna be putting in there? Huh? What are you gonna be setting out in here? Okay, I'm gonna set out uh, satsumas, uh, peaches, plums, figs, and uh, I'm gonna plant a few plants between the rows and uh, till it, and it'll be this garden stuff, uh, corn, peanuts, uh, peas, butter beans, you know, okra, good, that's the right for the garden. All right, well, I figured I'm gonna have to come over here and get some. Yeah, that, that's what I'll do with them, but give them away. I, I, I grow it just for the heck of it. That's a row of figs that they go from here to Gene's house up yonder. And this is a row of Alberta peaches that went to the house. This is seven rows of plum. And that, that's a, a Japanese persimmon in the next row. And I'm gonna plant two more rows there with I'm broken up, and then I'll show you these. These go all the way to the end. Of the, that's all the space I've got. And I'm just, I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'm making use of the land while I've got it. And I got uh, Asian pears. Uh, apples, look at the apple tree blooming down to the end. And uh, got three, three rows of apples. Pomegranates, blueberries, and there's the Asian pears over, over here. And uh, another row of peaches at the next one. And I've got some boxwood over here that I rooted in the early summer and small crepe myrtle that I rooted in the early part of the summer. I buy it and lay it and I probably won't be able to sell them because I'm not going to give them away. I can give them away. And I can give them away. You can give them away <laughs> if they want to. Yeah. As long as you're free. Do you have those crepe myrtles that uh, grow up in a single trunk? Or is that any crepe myrtle? You just have to trim them. Yeah, um, you can take these and keep all but one one limb uh, trimmed off and it'll make a tree. But once they get real bushy at the bottom, it's hard to turn them in, isn't it? You do ch trim that uh, bushy off all the way out. It, I guess it's a little aggravating, but trim on up off, but that's the way you get them anyway. That's why they charge you so much at the supermarkets for, I guess. I got a, a row of red maples in my fence, so, and they don't bloom, but in the fall, but the, uh, they turn, yeah, they, they uh, leaves turn red. And it's just as beautiful as it's blue as you can find anywhere. How many years you teach ag out here at Shemuckla? I told 32 years. What year did you retire? Oh, I don't really remember, but it, uh, 82, I think. And uh, I went and got construction left license. I felt good and was able to do anything I wanted to do. I, I got construction license and was a vinyl side installer and a roofing contractor for 23 years after that. But you started the nursery while you were doing that, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, part time until I, I retired. And, I ran the uh, nursery 44 years, part time. And I've been general stuff in the nursery. What the local people I thought would plant, sent out if they had them. And that's 
that's what I said. I, I get the plants for a while. I, I'd root them, take a little stem about that long, and put it in a pot and root it. And then the, the next spring, I'll put it in a gallon box, pot. And then after the, they stayed in there about three or four months, set them in the, there's, at one time I had six, 65,000 azaleas and sold out to the, so many people would want. But that was before Lowe's and Walmart and everybody in the community went to group mm. uh, selling them. I did it, uh, when the, there wasn't the, very many people do it, selling them. So that's how you made your fortune? Yeah, that's the way I got my first million. <laughs> I made the second million at the roofing. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm back chicken farming and growing. Let's go look at those stories from teaching at Shemuckle. Oh, look, I don't know why it's a good time. Begin to end. If I could have lived, if I'd had enough money to live on, I'd work for free. I enjoy teaching so well. And that's one thing I miss now more than my wife died, of course, but a daughter. But I enjoyed it. I, I grew old with the boys and the egg, I guess. But some of the best trips at high point of things I remember some of the trips we took to the Tampa State Fair and uh, one trip we took to the National FFA Convention in Kansas City and uh, one trip to Nashville, Tennessee to Grand Ole Opry and uh, we were all introduced by Roy Aker who was one of the most famous uh, country singers and boys, I guess. And we got to, all got introduced to a nationwide wide audience of around 50 million people. Uh, so that's ha the nearest thing to fame <laughs> that I got, we got. But uh, we had that. And we went to several other sites and places. You would lose. But mostly it was a learning exercise, I guess. Or maybe it was more fun than it was learning. We had a. Uh, I have a man come by every now and then, now and then tell me what a good time he had in 1950 or 52, way back there, and uh, had one or two to tell me that, that I was the cause of them uh, uh, being, knowing how to conduct themselves, how to act. And uh, Danny Hope just there the other day, and he's reported to have, having said on his Facebook one time that uh, FFA was the, reason he was successful financially and socially also. He, he gave the credit to us knowing how to approach people, how to talk to people. And you didn't have to pay him to say that? <laughs> no. no. I didn't, didn't pay him nothing. He let me roof a house for him one time though. <laughs> <laughs> 